I'm Father Ed Quinnen, the superior of the Jesuits in Micronesia and Fiji. It's my pleasure to be with you to celebrate this All Saints Day. All Saints is a little different than All Souls. All Souls, we're praying for those who have gone before us, for their progress, so they attain their ultimate reward. The Saints, we celebrate. They've already run the race. They have been swept up into the love of God and are now in heaven. I think for all saints, we also get to appreciate the small saints, the ones that others might not have gotten to know. Um, sure, we have the big saints, the St. Francis of Assisi, the Mother Teresa, the St. Teresa of Avila. But I think we've also gotten to know saints that have lived next door to us, saints who are part of our own family, saints in our churches, in our communities, saints that we met volunteering and giving their service. We'll know their saints by the impact they have had on us. Because of their presence, we know greater faith, hope, and love. They've inspired us. They have opened our hearts to greater generosity, to appreciating the beauty of our world, the beauty of one another, the goodness that God has given to us. Some months ago, I was working to give a retreat. And as part of the retreat, I was praying with both Matthew 25, whatever you do to the least, and Matthew 5, the Beatitudes. And so there were a number of people that came to mind that exemplified those passages. And in the middle of the night, I woke up one evening and this name was right in front of me, Josie. Josie hadn't been part of my reflections to date. And so I offered her back to the spirit saying, if Josie is someone you want me to include, when I wake up, make sure you hold her right in front of me. And Josie was there on my waking, so I included her in my presentation for the retreatants. Josie was a quiet soul. She was always in the background. I got to know her through her husband, John. John was the patriarch of this large Italian-American family. He was the outer face of the family. He was the one involved in charity work, very present in his church, very present across this uh, community in Staten Island, New York. And I had gotten to know John when he was about 90 years of age. I would bring him communion on most Sundays. And over time, had gotten to know Josie as well. But initially, Josie was always in the background. She'd often be watching TV when I arrived. Her two favorite shows, Judge Judy and Roller Derby. That crazy thing where people are skating in a circle around a ramp and trying to elbow one another in these goofy pratfalls, she would laugh. And I just thought she was eccentric. I was focused on John. And you know, over time got to hear John's story and his growing up. He and Josie would have been born around 1910, 1911. And they knew those early years of the Italian American community in New York who were the recipients of a great deal of prejudice. They were the, the new immigrants, the working poor. And they felt that exclusion. The events that really brought it home to them was when their church was condemned by the city of New York to make way for a public housing project, not for them. And their beautiful church was torn down. They were moved to the neighboring church which was much less beautiful. 
Now eventually that church burned and this community put up a new church building and a school. And John and Josie were very involved in making sure this church had a school and that over time they did fundraising so that children could, who could not have afforded the tuition got to go. Now eventually John died, but I kept going to the house um, to deliver communion. And so I got to know Josie a little bit better, Josie in her own right. And I began to appreciate that she was the quiet heart of the family because she had been holding down the home. It allowed John to go out. It was Josie being the heart that allowed this whole family to function. I'd be invited to come to birthday parties, to, to barbecues on Sunday evenings. Um, and it was a very large family. And they sort of liked to squabble, to have uh, some disagreements, which was fine. But if voices got raised, all of a sudden I would hear Josie, hey, hey, hey. And then she would introduce a new topic. And before I knew it, she had this whole family laughing and smiling. Her gift of joy was evident. But I really saw her being able to stitch together all the disparate pieces of this family. Josie was the peacemaker, the heart, that loving presence that gathered them together. I began to appreciate more and more the saintsliness of this woman. And particularly when this, the topic arose, um, you know, our people have mostly moved out of this neighborhood. Our families have mostly moved out. Why should we continue to support that parish school? Josie would have nothing to do with that. Those families who have moved in, mostly Mexican, have as much need for Catholic education as our families did when we started that school we are going to continue to back it. It doesn't matter who is using it. Those children, they are the important part. Josie, for me, is one of those quiet saints. Few people have been privileged to know her because she spent most of her time in that house. But because of what she did, she allowed the family to be engaged in all of these activities. She was a blessing for that community. I offer you the perspective that you too have known people who embody the Beatitudes. I'd just like to read those Beatitudes to you as a reminder. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I'd encourage you as you celebrate All Saints Day to think of those of your own private saints who have lived these Beatitudes. Who have you known who is poor in spirit, who has mourned, who has hungered for righteousness? who has been merciful, clean of heart, a peacemaker. You have known saints. I'd encourage you to appreciate those that God has brought into your life and to maybe spend a little time for yourself. Which of these Beatitudes are you called to embrace? Which is your path to holiness? We all want to join these saints in heaven. And so I ask you, encourage you to pray with these Beatitudes and to ask God to gift you with the knowledge of your path. 
blessings on your day.